Welcome to Double Alpha Academy and our new Grip Customization Kit uh, Instruction DVD. The idea of this uh, short DVD is to teach you how to use the materials and how to customize the grips of your gun using the kit which is supplied here. Uh, with the kit come all the materials that you will need, but uh, you will need a couple of tools, uh, a soldering iron, uh, a knife, a um, couple of paint brushes perhaps, something to mix the paint in, a uh, drill and some drill bits, and you'll see how we use all that as we get through this program. Basically the idea behind this kit is to enable you to customize the grip of your gun so that you can reach a point where the gun fits the contour of your hands uh, in a in a way that enables you to get better recoil control. Now the logic of this concept um, is something that I've realized for a good number of years and I've been doing on my guns probably for the last 10 years or so. You see it's my belief that one of the biggest mistakes shooters make is that we tend to over grip the gun. We tend to grip the guns too tightly while we shoot and part of the reason we do that is to prevent the gun from sliding around in our hands. Uh, a lot of shooters believe that making the gun uh, sharper with sharper checkering uh, goes a long way to solve that problem and indeed it does to some degree but I think that you can achieve a better result by trying to fit the contour of the grip to the inner contour of your hand and the important thing to realize is that when you're holding your hands in the shooting position gripping your gun the inner contour of your hand really looks uh, very little like the grip that's supplied with your uh, STI or other competition gun that you may be using. In fact, if you were to take a piece of Play-Doh in your hand um, and grip it in such a way that it resembles the grip that you would have on a pistol, if you were to hold that Play-Doh in your hand for a couple of seconds and then remove your hands and take a look at the form that's created by the Play-Doh, this in reality is the area of full contact with your hands. In other words, this represents the area of equal pressure where your hands and your fingers are applying an equal amount of pressure to the grip of the gun. Now, obviously, there's a bit of a difference there. The grip of the gun doesn't look very much like the form that's shaped by the Play-Doh, and indeed there's a good logical reason for that. The, the gun manufacturers, when they decide on the design of a grip, they have many considerations to take into play, and uh, you know, everybody has different grips, everybody has different applications for their firearms. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to contour the grip of the gun to suit everybody's hands. It wouldn't be practical for carry uh, purposes. It wouldn't be practical for many applications. So, they make the grips in much of a standard manner. But, when you hold a grip like this in your hands and you grip down, you apply pressure, what's actually happening is you are applying pressure only on certain points on the grip. Because of the, mis the mismatch between the contour of your hand and the shape of the gun, there are areas on the grip where you are applying very little pressure. When you grip down with your strong hand, you're basically applying pressure on the front strap and the rear strap, but very little contact on the side of the gun here. You can see that quite clearly when you look at the shape created by the Play-Doh. You'll see that there's, there's a lump right there, and that lump is the inner contour of your strong hand. Now, that lump is not represented on the frame of the gun so this area over here is not really making full contact with your hand when you're gripping a normally shaped frame. For this reason you you have hollow areas. Another obvious place is just in front of your fingers as your strong hand fingers wrap around the gun right over there there is a quite a large step like a ledge which is created in front of the fingers of your strong hand. Now your weak hand has to come down and make contact on the gun in this area. But what's going to happen is because of that empty space here right in front of your fingers, that empty space there will not allow your left hand to make full contact with the gun. And these are just two examples of the most problematic areas and the areas in which you're really going to feel uh, the lack of contact with the gun. So to compensate for that, what we tend to do is we tend to grip the pistol tighter. Now, gripping the gun tighter has a lot of disadvantages. When you grip the gun too tightly, you lose the ability to transfer the gun from target to target in a very smooth motion. Um, this is a disadvantage. Also, we all know the problem of trigger freeze. When we're trying to shoot very, very quickly and we're trying to control recoil, often we feel that 
we're not able to make the gun fire as quickly as we would like because we're gripping down so tightly with the fingers of our strong hand our trigger finger needs to make a fast smooth motion but it's difficult for that finger to move quickly when the other fingers of the hand are gripping down so powerfully so over gripping the gun is, is, is a disadvantage it's a negative shaping the gun to match the contour of your hands better will enable you to achieve the same recoil control the same gun control the same ability to prevent the gun moving in your hand but while applying much less pressure much less power on your grip because you have a bigger surface area that's making true contact with your hand now by doing this by 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 reducing the pressure of your grip you'll be able to move the gun smoother from target to target you'll be able to avoid those trigger put those trigger freezes as you shoot and the fit of the gun to your hand will help you control the movement of the gun so for these reasons I'm a big believer in customizing the grips and that's something that I've been doing for many years this is for instance one of my open guns um, it won't win any awards at the moment for looks and appearance but it's a functioning tool uh, if you come in close on the grip here you'll see that I've built up the right hand side of the panel so that this area here is built up away from the grip filling in the hole that's created in my hand on the other side of the gun I build in an uh, extra piece to fill in in front of my fingers as my fingers close up there around the grip of the gun this surface over here completes the area so that my left hand can come down tight and complete the grip of the gun these modifications including of course the checkering that we're going to get into uh, shortly these modifications really allow me to achieve good recoil control and good control of the gun without the need to really grip the gun too tightly and that's what this kit is all about and that's what this uh, DVD is all about over the years giving classes and shooting at matches I've had many people come up to me and ask me how I do this modification how I build up the grips what material I use and over the years I've experimented with many different kinds of materials uh, many different kinds of processes and it's evolved into what we're presenting to you here uh, hopefully this will be a shortcut for most of you that you can go right ahead and and modify the grips the way that today I believe is the best to do uh, some of its reversible some of it is not so uh, you do so at your own risk and you take your own responsibility when you decide to work on your guns and modify your guns the nice thing about the STIs for instance if that's what you're using is that the uh, actual plastic grip is a modular grip so you can relatively cheaply replace the actual plastic grip of the gun if need be uh, you can also experiment with a spare grip uh, to make sure that you're getting it just the way you want it to be and I believe that you shouldn't be afraid of modifying your equipment um, I, I know too many competition shooters who go out there and they buy a very expensive race gun they buy expensive rigs but then they are too worried and too afraid to do any kind of modification to their equipment they don't want to have any marks or any scratches or any uh, you know any kind of dirt on the guns and really in a way uh, these are working tools you want to try and maximize the performance of your equipment and to do that you need to customize it you need to make sure that it fits your needs precisely and shaping the grip of the gun is just a simple example uh, of something that you could do and thereby improve the performance of your firearm the double alpha grip customization kit uh, really provides all the materials to address two issues the one and the simpler process perhaps is simply checkering the grip making the surface finish of the grip such that it gives your hand a, a, a more solid and firm grip on the gun to prevent the gun from sliding around while you shoot the manufacturers do checker the grips to some degree um, the front strap is usually checkered sometimes on the side and back panel as well but in my opinion they never quite make the grips sharp enough for competition use of course there's reasons for that as well a lot of users don't want their guns to be so sharp uh, for carry purposes it's not always the best thing to do but for shootability in my opinion the grips need to be very sharp and very checkered and I've always found that a sandpaper like finish on the guns is the way to go many people of course use skateboard tape they actually glue skateboard tape to the grips of the gun and that works to some degree uh, the problem with that is that unless you've got it locked under the panels like you would be able to do on a tank folio or a CZ if you glue that stuff on the outside of a, of a like an STI type of grip it won't last very well and when the weather's very warm they tend to slide off and you squeeze them off as you shoot so I've never found the skateboard tape to really work that well for me on these types of guns 
Another popular process used to try and checker the gun and make it sharper uh, and more grippier for the shooting is to use a soldering iron to actually make small dibbits uh, in the grip, cover the whole grip with small soldering iron dibbits and that creates a very rough surface. The plastic really creates a very rough little steps around those dibbits and that creates a very good grip and I, I like that. I've done that for a long while. I think that's one of the better ways you can uh, checker a plastic grip like an SDR and SV. Um, but really the best solution that I've come across is what I'm doing these days on my grips. It's, it's, a, it's a process that's included in this kit. It's basically a special kind of glue mixed with a, with a very fine grain of sand which is then sprinkled into the glue and it creates a finish which I found is very long lasting provided you prepare the surface of the grip properly. So this uh, Double Alpha Grip Customization Kit gives you everything that you need to create the surface finish on the guns, but also gives you the material and the parts that you need to go ahead and build up the grip uh, to customize it to fit uh, your hand contour. Um, and that's something that we're going to show you how to do now. The actual process of checkering the grip, the sand and the uh, glue finish is a simple process. Uh, if you're going to do only that, and you're not going to use the epoxy material to actually build up the grip, then you can go ahead and you can just do the surface finish directly onto the grip of the gun. Now, most likely what you'd like to do before you start is dismantle the gun completely. Remove all the parts and just work on the plastic grip. Uh, for the purposes of this DVD, I'm going to be demonstrating and explaining the work done on an STI gun. Uh, this process would be very similar with other, module, with other modular frames or other uh, plastic grip frames. Although you could go ahead and do a similar process on the side panels of a Tankfolio pistol or a CZ pistol or any other type of pistol that enables you to uh, modify the grip in this manner. While you're working on modifying the grips, keep in mind the restrictions that you have in the various divisions. If you're going to be making a modification, to an open class gun, well then you can do pretty much anything you want to the grip. There's no box restriction, there's no width restriction, you can build up the side panels as big as you like and you'd be legal for open. However, if you are going to be using this gun in the standard or the limited division, you have to keep in mind the measurements of the box which will enable you a maximum width of 45 millimeters. Now, the guns have a grip of about 32 millimeters which means that you have Oh, roughly five or six millimeters that you can afford to build up on each side of the grip. That's worth doing. The magwell itself puts you right on the limit. The magwell on these guns is just under 45 millimeters. And when you are working on these grips, uh, you, can, you can do this modification with the gun fully assembled. I have done that in the past, but I do find that it's worth the time to take all the parts out the gun uh, to do it right and to do it cleanly. Uh, what I do like to do is while you're working on the gun, if you are using a magwell on the pistol, leave the magwell in place because not only does that affect the way your grip uh, is on the gun, but also when you build the side panels uh, that may be uh, touching the magwell area and you want to make sure that you have left the clearance for the magwell. So leave the magwell on the gun. I also like to just put the grip safety in place. I use a little bit of, uh, of uh, sticky material to do that, just like a, a, a putty type material to hold the grip safety so that I can actually get my hand on the gun in what would be a comfortable and realistic uh, grip. So before we get into uh, actually building up the grip of the gun, let's simply talk about the surface finish. To checker the grip using the materials provided in the kit, uh, what you're going to be using is you're going to be using this uh, glue binder and this is the material that we will then go ahead and mix in with the color dyes. Now you have three color dyes in the kit. The one is a Bray is, is, a, is a reddish brown color which goes fairly well with the red kit, so it's the closest match that we could find to the red color. Uh, the black will enable you to create a very dark black color or if you use just a little bit like we will do now, we can create a gray which will uh, match the STI grays which is the most common color used on the, uh, on the executive guns, the limited guns. Uh, we also have a blue dye which goes well with the open color grips uh, uh, as standard on the Grandmaster guns. Uh, these color dyes you're going to mix in with the paint, just doing it by touch. You just put some of the glue in, uh, use your brush to pick up a few grains of the dye powder. The material that you have in the kit uh, certainly is enough material to do several uh, grips. Um, you'll be able to use the same dye again and again. You won't need to use that much dye to create the amount of paint that you need uh, for a single grip. So you have enough material here to work with. 
The other item that we're going to be using is this silver sand. Now, silver sand is a, is a very fine grain sand. It's actually used mostly for sandblasting. It has a, um, the actual grains of sand have a very sharp edge to them, but it's a very fine grain sand. And this is the sand that we found actually works best uh, for giving you that nice sharp sandpaper finish at the end of the process. Basically, the first thing you're going to want to do on your grip uh, before going ahead and painting it is preparing the surface. Now to make sure that you do get a very good grip on the on the surface of the plastic so that this glue stays in place for a long while you're going to want to take a little bit of sandpaper and do a little bit of preparation to the grip of your gun. I like to use a, a, a cleaning brush or toothbrush style brush to work the sandpaper and basically Anywhere that you plan uh, on having the sandpaper, on having the paint done to the grip, you're going to want to go ahead and, and try and checker uh, and try and rough the edges of the surface so that you don't have any smooth areas left on the grip. A larger piece would probably be easier. Uh, especially in the areas where the surface is very uh, slippery, very smooth, like on the diamonds, on the STI grips, or just in front of the checkered area here. These areas you want to checker and rough up a little bit to ensure that the paint grips really well. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So after spending a few minutes scuffing up the grip, uh, I've made sure that all of the smooth surfaces are now a little bit rougher just using some sandpaper or you could use a Dremel tool with a with a uh, sandpaper wheel on it uh, gently and just try and scuff up those areas that are very smooth it'll just help the glue bind and stay in place uh, a lot longer and now after doing that and making sure that you've removed all the dust created by the sanding so you want to make sure you blow all of that off uh, your grip is basically ready for paint uh, what you can do to get a better result is very much the same way you would do if you're painting your house is you want to uh, use some uh, use some white tape just to mark off the areas where you don't want the paint so that you get a nice clean edge um, you can do that I'm gonna do that now right here in front of the grip now this is where having the gun dismantled makes the job a lot easier because if the gun was with all its parts in place it would be a lot harder to get this uh, white tape to sit exactly in the right position so having the gun in parts makes it a bit easier to do that I'm just gonna block off that area over here Okay, so uh, I've spent a couple of minutes preparing this grip for paint. I've uh, covered the uh, grip safety and the magwell and uh, some other areas on the gun where I don't want the paint, I don't want the adhesive or the uh, sand grains to set. And basically, um, if I were not going to build up this grip, if I was just going to checker it, I would now go ahead and prepare the paint, uh, the glue uh, mixture with the color dye so that I could get the right shade of gray that I wanted and then uh, apply that layer over the grip and uh, apply the uh, the sand for the coarse finish. I'll show you how to do that later on but we're going to do that on a grip which also includes the build up, uh, the modification to the shape of the grip so we can do both of those processes in one. So now rather than painting the grip let's move ahead and discuss how to actually use the uh, material provided, the epoxy uh, putty, to shape the grip of the gun to fit your contour and keeping in mind the restriction of size that you'd have on a limited or, or, or a, uh, a limited or a standard division gun we're going to keep that in mind and make a grip modification that would be legal for the standard class now of course if you're shooting in the production division you can't do any of this uh, this is really a process that is reserved for open or for limited uh, standard class shooters to build up the grip of the gun you're going to use this material right here which is a two base epoxy um, this material is very easy to work with uh, you mix the two parts together it gives you 15 minutes or so of work time in which you can shape it uh, to match your needs after that it's going to harden uh, it'll be fully hardened within 12 hours but it'll be hard enough to handle within probably an hour uh, then you can continue the process of fitting it to the gun Really over the years there have been two processes that I've used. The one is gluing this material directly to the grip of the gun. Uh, this material is a very strong adhesive. It will grip to the grip of the pistol uh, and stay in place indefinitely. So 
if you were sure of the size and the shape and the placement that you want, you could actually glue this material directly onto the panels of the gun. I used to do that for a long while and it was a process that worked well. But over the years I found that often I wanted to slightly modify the change of the grip or I wanted to use the gun without those extension panels or I wanted to just make new panels and I found it handy to be able to remove them from the gun. So since then I've upgraded to a process where I actually uh, create the panels in such a way that they can be removed from the pistol and then I screw them in place uh, using a set of uh, thermal sunk nuts which we sink into the grip, uh, which are provided, of course, with the kit and these stainless steel screws, which then attach uh, the actual side panels to the gun and give you the option to be able to remove them later on and modify them. So we're going to do that process now and I'll show you how to create those panels in such a way that you can remove them. So we begin by actually uh, taking some of the material that we need, deciding on how much we need is uh, the first part of the process. This tube here gives you approximately 50 grams, which is plenty for uh, at least two, uh, two such grips. I find that on my limited guns, and these are some uh, examples of panels that I've made earlier on, uh, on these limited gun panels, um, the weight of the material being used, and I can use a little digital scale here just to check that. Um, well, that's grains. Let's change this into grams roughly 15 grams of material on the right hand side panel and about 14 or 15 grams on the left side now on my open guns I'm going to use a little bit more than that about 17 or 18 grams because I want to make the panel slightly wider I'd rather have them wider on my standard gun as well however these panels once they're in place on the gun uh, will create a size which is pretty much on the limit of what is standard legal so when these are in place and we take our caliper here and we just check to see the width of that, that is just about 44 and a half millimeters. So in fact, I'm right on the limit of what I can do. Keep in mind that after we coat this with the sand and the glue as well, that's going to add a little bit of thickness to it as well. So you can't really go, uh, as you build up the panels, you can't really go above 43 or maybe 43 and a half millimeters. You need to leave yourself at least a millimeter and a half for the layers of paint and glue which come on the outside. So building up these grips, I can say that probably 13 grams or so of material is going to be more or less what I'm going to want to use. And I'm going to try and avoid cutting the table here by using a little piece of wood to cut on. There's a little sticker on the edge of this, so you can remove that first and then just cut off a piece like so. And that piece right there is just under 13 grams, so I'm going to make it just slightly bigger by cutting another sliver off here and putting it on my scale and that's 14 grams so that's a good point to start with that's the material that I'm going to use now with the kit we do provide a set of latex gloves now uh, you can use them if you want personally I'd rather not um, if your hands are sensitive to uh, if your skin is sensitive to uh, glues and materials like that and you really want to make sure you don't make contact with this material uh, you can use the latex gloves personally I find that just washing your hands when you're done is is adequate and I've never had a problem with this material uh, it's not a very toxic material to be using although I certainly wouldn't swallow it uh, prepare the material by removing the plastic coating that sits around it. There's a plastic film which you want to peel off. And once you've done that, basically you want to just mix this material together until you create an equal color. It comes into a grayish color, the blue and the and the light gray color mixed together until you have a solid shade. Now while I'm doing this, I'll explain to you another good reason for weighing the weight of the material as you work. Uh, what I like to do is I like to figure out exactly how much material I'm using on each side of the panels of the gun and actually keep a record of that because if I'm setting up more than one gun and usually I set up two open guns and two standard guns simultaneously and I want to make sure that both of the grips are identical so that as I switch from one gun to the other it doesn't feel strange or different in my hand. So for that reason I always weigh the amount of material that goes on the right hand panel and the left hand panel. In fact, while I'm shaping the grips, if I need to remove material, uh, I'll weigh how much I've removed and then deduct that from the total so that when I create a new grip, I can, I can simulate it, I can make it exactly the same. Uh, 
and make sure that all my guns feel the same in my hand so that when you switch you don't have a problem. That's something you should consider doing. Uh, on the same note, later on when I show you how to drill the holes and position the holes uh, in the grip of the gun to connect the panels, you may want to keep in mind that it's a smart thing to do to try and make those holes identical on more than one gun if you're setting up two or three guns to make the holes in exactly the same position so that your side panels are now interchangeable between the guns so that if one should break or should look, should get damaged during a match you can take the side panel off the other gun and the hole position will be the same so you can mount it on the gun that's something that I've learned through experience to do and it's a process that I always try to make sure that I'm doing when I uh, use this material and create new panels now the way I'm going to shape this and now we're working on the right hand panel the one which fits under your right hand uh, is simply make it into a uh, banana style shape like a tube like so place it on the side panel of the gun and then squeeze down onto it with my hand in the shooting position now to prevent your hand from um, now this is where I've skipped a process where I need to skip back if I were going to be gluing this directly to the gun in such a way that I could no longer remove it this is where I would simply place it on the grip and squeeze it into place but since we are going to be trying to uh, we do want to be able to remove this what you do is you simply take a piece of uh, packing tape and you place that packing tape over the panel make it nice and tight and flush and flat as can be use your knife here just to let it contour around the gun and you want this piece of tape to be laying flat on the side panels of the gun like so and this is what will enable you to later on remove this material from the gun and attach it with screws. Now, placing the material pretty much just along the side panel of the gun like so, pretty much in the center. And a good piece of advice here would be to use a little bit of water and put that water on your hand. Because by doing so, you'll prevent your hand from sticking to this material too much and that becomes useful, otherwise it, it tends to become a little bit difficult to work with. Uh, grip safety is not exactly solid in place. So with the water on my hand I'm not really sticking to this material all that much. I'm just going to squeeze down trying to keep my hand pretty much in my shooting position on the gun in such a way that as I squeeze down and flatten the epoxy material it's going to form a filler which fills in on the gun exactly where is needed and that's what you're trying to achieve filling in the contour that's created here inside your grip and that contour is what you want to try and fill out so that you make a more complete grip contact with your gun and that's looking pretty good that's pretty much the result that I want to achieve. I don't really want the edges to be allowed to be too thin because that's just going to tend to break off. You can see that as I squeezed it down here I've kind of gone over the magwell. I don't like doing that because it makes taking off and on the magwell too difficult and this tends to break off as well so what I usually do is I'll remove that little excess of material there that's been squashed over the magwell. Use a little bit of water to round off the edges there. In fact I'll use that water to smooth down a lot of what I've done, take out the hand print and set that in place. Now you may want to take a look and see that your epoxy material has not overrun the uh, screw hole on the top of the grip here on the STI frames. You don't want that, so if it has reached all the way up to that screw position there, I'm just going to try and push it back down a little bit to make sure that that is not a problem later on when I assemble the gun. Also, uh, the same note would be to take note of where the, uh, the Mac catch button is going to be fitting in here to make sure that your epoxy has not spread out over that Mac catch because that again will create a problem once you try to assemble the firearm. So that is pretty much the result that I'm looking for.
Squeezing down on the material will help flatten it out into its final position. You don't want to create too much of a bulk on the side of the gun. And you want to make sure that it's in the right place under your hand. And that happens naturally simply by placing it on the gun and squeezing down on it. It's going to create a shape which is just where your hand needs that filler to make a more complete and full contact with your gun. Now as I've squeezed that down a bit, I've once again gone over the magwell, so I'm going to remove a little bit of excess material from there. And once again, flatten that out. Now I've removed these two pieces of material. What I would do now is weigh them. I knew I had exactly 14 grams of material when I started and I've removed, um, well once again I'm in grain, so we go back to gram. I've removed exactly one gram, so I'm down to 13 grams of material that I've added on the right hand panel of the gun. That's something that I want to take note of because again as I want to create a duplicate of that panel I'm going to do the same process, place it in the same way with the exact same amount of material and that way I'll ensure to get the same size grip on my second gun. So we're going to let that sit for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back and we'll uh, in very much the same way we'll place the uh, opposite side panel. So I'm um, preparing the material for the uh, second panel, for the left hand panel. The right hand panel I've left to set for about half an hour or so, um, just so that it's not too soft while I'm squeezing the gun, trying to get the other panel shaped. Uh, much in the same way that we did before, we're going to place a little bit of tape over the grip because I don't want this uh, epoxy to grip to the panel of the gun. I want to be able to remove it once it's dry. So. I just put some packing tape, you can use any kind of plastic foil uh, that you can cover the grip with just to prevent the epoxy from sitting onto the gun. What you do want to make sure of though is that this uh, uh, plastic foil that you're putting on the gun is nice and tight and flush on the panel so that you don't create any kind of air bubbles. Now, uh, same as you did before, you're going to want to have some water on your hands. This time um, it's your left hand that's going to be making most contact with the glue, although you also want to put some water on the tips of your fingers because the way you place this, uh, you create this uh, little banana shape of material again and you place that just in front of your fingers on the panel of the gun and then the base of your hand nice and wet, you squeeze down onto the grip and flatten that into place. like so. And that is pretty much the shape that I'm expecting to get. As you can see it completes from the tip of my fingers completes the grip so that I don't have this big hole in front of my fingertips where my left support hand is going to come onto the gun. Now it's a little bit too small. In fact, I would like this bulge of material to actually be uh, higher up so that it almost meets the tip of my fingers. As you can see, it's, it's somewhat lower over there. But that's because the gun I'm setting up here is a limited gun and I cannot build up the material as large as I would like simply because of the restrictions in place regarding the width of the gun. And in fact, before that starts getting too hard, I'm going to take my caliper here and I'm going to try and measure and see how much of a build up have I got here on the gun. And I can see that I'm at about at the thickest part, I'm about 43 and a half or so, between 43 and a half and 44. That should be just about perfect. Remember, keep in mind we're going to have the sand coming on top of this, so maybe I'm going to flatten this out just a little bit more to make sure that I've left enough space allowance for the layer of paint and sand um, and not go over the width allowed in the standard gun division of 45 millimeters. So that's going to be like so. Okay, again I take a look and see that my buildup has not pushed and flattened itself over the mag catch area because that'll just get in the way. Also, 
you do want to make sure that you don't build up the section over here to where it's too high because if you allow this to go too high it can create a problem in reaching the Mac catch with your strong hand thumb so you really don't want to build up this area too high up along the side of the grip you want to remain just about under the height of the Mac catch I do like this area here though because this is a surface that my weak hand base of thumb can squeeze down onto and really get a good uh, contact with the gun and help control the recoil so this is pretty much set the way I want it the other side is almost hardened by now this is gonna have to sit for a few minutes now and I'm gonna let that sit for a while because the next step before I remove these panels from the gun I want to drill the holes through into the frame uh, and I'm gonna do that before I remove the epoxy before I remove it from the frame just to make sure that I have it in exactly the right position so we're going to leave this for a few minutes to set and then we're going to come back and drill those holes okay so now we've let the uh, side panels here uh, dry for a while after a few hours they're hard enough to handle you want to let them set a little bit before you remove them just so you don't deform them um, when they're hard they're not hundred percent hard the material we use has a kind of a flexible finish to that and we do that on purpose because a harder material I found tends to crack so we're purposely using a material that has some flexibility to it and I find that lasts a lot better um, before you remove the panels what you really want to do is you want to drill the holes that we're going to use to attach them now the reason we want to drill those before we remove it is to make sure that they're sitting in the right position otherwise sometimes when you remove it uh, it's a little bit hard to make sure it's back in the right position before you drill it so you want to drill it first now we're going to make two holes in each side to attach the panels to the gun and two things you want to be aware of number one is on the STI frames there is a metal insert in the frame which goes down to about the bottom of the height of the mag catch so you certainly want to drill your top hole below the height of the mag catch same goes for the bottom there's a little uh, metal screw in the bottom of the grip there which is really there only for appearances but you don't want to drill directly into that so pay attention to those two guides as you prepare you can take a uh, just a guide looking uh, to make sure we're in the right place and I'm gonna just make a mark using uh, a drill bit here or a pen make sure that I'm in the right position so I'll look and see where that where I expect that bottom screw to be and I'll mark it well above it so I'm gonna place my first hole over there my second hole well below the height of the trigger guard right about there those are pretty close together I think I'll go further apart go there and there and on the opposite side I'm just gonna to check to see I'm not going into the trigger into that screw we'll go here and well below the mag catch there so those are the positions uh, that I choose to mark to drill those holes and I'm gonna drill those first just take a battery power drill here and a three millimeter drill bit works well with the screws that we're using so we're just going to go ahead and drill those straight through don't apply too much pressure Now we've got our holes in position, we're ready to remove these panels. We no longer need that in there. And with a nice tight tug, this should come off pretty much in one go. There's the one side. And the other side okay we can remove the tape that we used now remember these do have some flex to them you want to handle them with care they won't crack very easily but they're a lot firmer and stronger when they're attached to the gun because they've got a hard surface to rest upon so when you're handling them off the gun you want to make sure you don't bend them all too much although their flexibility will allow them to return to their form you don't want to push your luck and we now have our two side panels which are custom molded to the gun 
Now, as I said before, these are slightly smaller than I would like, but this is the maximum that you can allow uh, to do and still fit in the legal IPSC box for standard division. Placing these on the gun, you'll see that the mold that I made ends just below the position of the screw there, and that's important because otherwise assembly will be difficult, doesn't get in the way of the mag catch, so that'll be just perfect, and I can see that the position of the holes is good. And the same goes for the other side. When that rests against the gun, underneath the height of the mag catch, so it doesn't get in the way of releasing the magazine catch when changing magazine. Now, we now want to set the thermal nuts into the plastic for attaching these screws. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to enlarge the holes in the frame to a 5 millimeter. 5 millimeter is perfect because those thermal nuts are about 5.5. So a 5 millimeter hole works really well. We'll just enlarge those holes real quick. Easy enough to do on a plastic frame. And now we have our holes 5 millimeter in the correct position. The way we're going to insert these bolts is simply place them right there on the frame and you do want to place, place them with the right direction you'll see the one side is narrower than the other it's a lot easier to assemble if we insert them with the narrow side first like so placed on the frame right about there and then using a simple soldering iron we apply heat to the bolt while applying a little bit of pressure not too much pressure till you see that this thermal nut starts sinking into the plastic now you want to try and keep it 90 degrees so that your bolt sits straight and upright don't apply too much pressure because you do not want to push this bolt all the way through you just want to insert it until it's about flush with the surface of the plastic the thickness will be such that it will not stick out on the inside and once it's nice and level, you're ready to proceed to the next one. Now, this is a pretty simple and easy process. We've tried lots of different ways of doing this. And this is the easiest way. You don't need a particularly warm soldering iron. Just a normal 50 watt soldering iron seems to work just fine. You just want to push it in until it's flush with the outer level of the plastic. These little thermal nuts have ridges on them and those ridges grip onto the plastic and will hold this little nut in place which gives you a nice uh, area to work with when you attach the bolts. Can jiggle it around a little bit, speed things up, but don't press too hard. You don't want to insert this further than it needs to go, otherwise, it will stick out the inside, and that is not the result that you want. That one seems a little bit off, so I'll straighten it out a bit. That looks fine. And the last one. Now, once these are in position, they enable you to open and close those screws as often as you like. We could actually seat the screws directly into the plastic, and I have done that before problem with that is that it works fine as long as you don't open and reopen and close it uh, because if you do that it does tend to weaken very quickly and then the screw no longer holds in the plastic Why? now on the inside of the frame you may find that you have a uh, small uh, plastic bulging out there on the inside of course you want to clean that out before you go any further because that will get in the way of your magazine insertion so we take a small little file and you should wait until the plastic hardens. It takes just a couple of seconds, really. Um, I'll start on the right-hand side, because that's what I did first. And I'll simply smooth away those plastic folds created by the heat. And you'll be able to see that that uh, bronze nut, thermal nut, is inserted pretty much all the way flush with the inner panel of the plastic as well. The, the thickness is perfect. It's about three and a half millimeters, which fits perfectly onto the SDI thickness. 
so that it's flush both on the inside and on the outside, which is handy. And so now the inside of the panel is uh, pretty much smooth enough. It's not going to get in the way of the function of our magazines. And we have a nice bolt connection here, which we can then attach our screws to. And this is what we're going to use, these uh, stainless steel screws to connect the side panel that we've just created. Now, you have two lengths of stainless steel screws available, a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. Now, depending on the size of the panels that you've made, you can choose uh, whether you want to use the 10 millimeter or the 8 millimeter. These are pretty uh, small panels, being uh, that they for a limited size gun. So we're probably going to go ahead and use the shorter screws. I do want to make a little bit of a relief in this epoxy so that the head of the screw can sink into it. We're just going to measure the size of that head there and make sure we use the right drill bit. That's about a six millimeter. So I'll go ahead and use a six millimeter drill bit just to make a little bit of a countersink. In fact, I could actually use a countersink bore. I'm going to go ahead and use this just to make sure we don't go too deep. Now you really want to be very gentle with this, you don't need to apply a lot of force. You just want to give it enough of a relief so that the head of the screw doesn't stick out of your side panels. And that should do just fine. As you can see, this material is very easy to work with, which also gives you the option to use a file or a Dremel to reshape it and correct it if you feel that you need to do that. These screws now, the shorter 8mm screws, are going to be perfect for attaching this panel. They're going to stick out. You really don't need them to bulge out on the inside all that far. You could have used a longer screw here. Um, these are uh, jutting out approximately 2mm and 3mm is fine as well. Two millimeters will work. If you wanted a little more traction on the screw, you can go ahead and use the longer screw that's provided with the kit, or you can give it a little more of a countersink over there so that the screws can go a little deeper. Once that's done, we can just assemble it to make sure that it sits well in place. You see those threads that we've inserted in the gun are perfectly positioned, so we get immediately a nice solid grip. So now we've attached all four screws and we've got a nice solid grip on those side panels and these will stay in place just as long as you need them to. I mean, once they're flush against the gun, there's no way they're going to bend or break and they give a nice feel to the gun and now the fit to my hand is way, way better than the original. We can just check to see what the overall width that we've achieved here is. I can see that I'm about at 43 and a half millimeters which is perfect that's where I want to be remember there's a limit of 45 which we can't exceed with a limited gun with a standard gun so we're going to stay below that keeping in mind that the paint that we're going to now uh, layer over it with the checkering uh, is going to add a little bit of width to the frame you can check to see that the bolts and the screws are not sticking out on the inside you can insert a magazine make sure that that's not getting caught on anything well the tape here is preventing it from falling free but there's no friction there and that fits nicely. And basically now we are ready to proceed to the final step of this grip preparation, uh, which is the painting and the checkering of the frame. Okay, so now that we've got our panels in place and attached with the screws, we are ready to paint the frame and give it the checkering finish that we want. Uh, you want to make sure that you mask off everywhere you don't want the paint. and. Also, try and mask off the screws a little bit here. As you can see, I've put some uh, tape over the screws because if you don't do that, uh, you tend to get a lot of paint in there while you're doing this process and then it's hard to unlock those screws. So a little bit of preparation in advance makes things easier. You've got this tub here of this adhesive paint and this is what you're going to use as your base. This uh, material that you have here is enough for several frames, so you really don't need more than uh, a small amount of it. Put it in an empty... Uh, little bucket, a little uh, tray or plate. And since we're doing a gray frame, we're going to use the black dye. And we really only need a little bit of this dye, especially as we don't want the color to be too dark. We're doing a gray, so we're just going to use just a small amount of this dye powder, mix it in, see what kind of color we get, and then add as needed.
And there we have the gray paint, which again is still probably a bit dark. But that'll work for our purposes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this paint, this adhesive paint, and paint the frame everywhere we want the checkering to come. And then as soon as that paint is in place, we're going to sprinkle a very fine layer of silver sand over it, and that'll attach itself into the paint and dry and stay put. The key to doing this is obviously not taking too much time to do it. You don't want to let the paint dry, although it does take a while, but you don't want to let it set and harden on the frame before you uh, sprinkle that sand over it. So we're going to make sure that our sand bucket here is in position and ready to be used. In fact, we're going to place a sheet of paper underneath it so we can collect that sand again for reuse. Now you could really use any sand for this process, but having experimented with a lot of different grains and a lot of different kinds, I find that this is a very fine grain of sand, works exceptionally well for what we're trying to achieve here. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our layer of paint everywhere on the frame. And then go ahead and sprinkle the sand into place. Now you do want to have a pretty thick layer to make sure that the sand has something to embed itself into. You don't have to go overboard, but you don't want to leave it too thin anywhere. All right, that's all painted and in place, and now we're ready to create our sandpaper finish. It really doesn't matter how much of this you put on, you can't really put too much. What doesn't stick into place will just fall off. So make sure that you sprinkle an even layer over the entire area that you painted. Don't worry if it doesn't seem to be all gripping. It'll, some of it will embed into the paint and some of it will just fall off. But you'll find that as long as you've put on the layer of paint thickly enough, you'll get the result that you're looking for. Placing a sheet of paper underneath will make it easy for you to collect that sand that's left and you can always, again you have in this kit more sand than you need for several frames or if you want to do the base pads of your, of your magazines as well I find that to be a, a very good use for this process. You can't really put on too much, as I said, what, what doesn't stick will simply fall off. front strap here. Now you can see that this is a lot better to do with the gun completely disassembled. If you were doing this with an assembled gun you'd be getting the sand into the mechanism and that would be something you'd have to take apart anywhere and clean it. So I would suggest dismantling the gun completely like I'm doing here with just the frame. And that pretty much should cover it. You can tap off the loose paint. And in reality we are pretty much finished. This frame just needs to sit here for a couple of hours. The paint will be completely dry within six or eight hours, but I would suggest just leave it overnight before you remove any of your masking, uh, just to make sure that everything is set the way it needs to be. And we'll come back after several hours and take a look at the result and see what that looks like. So we've waited uh, 24 hours for the paint to dry and uh, we've reassembled the pistol and this here is the end result. We have our epoxy side panels connected with the two screws on either side and these are solid and they'll be here uh, to last. They're not going to come loose, they're not going to work free. The sandpaper finish result that we have all over the area that was not masked off on the gun and that gives a nice sharp grip that'll really ensure that the gun doesn't slide and doesn't move in your hand even in very warm and sweaty weather. And this finish is what you are able to achieve with the Double Alpha Academy Grip Modification Kit. All of the parts and everything that you need is in there. And I suggest you give it a try. A kit like this and a modification like this to your frame, either including the build-up as you see here, or for instance on this frame where we've done only the checkering of the frame without actually building up any extra material, um, is also an option which will ensure a very nice long-lasting uh, skateboard finish to your grip. So. I hope you found this informative and interesting. 
And on behalf of Double Alpha Academy, I'm Saul Kirsch wishing you all excellent shooting.